Hello everyone, uh, I'm Aditya here from GS Optic. Uh, welcome to our channel. And in this session, we're going to discuss about SAP AI introduction, and that's going to be the future of business. The agenda of this session will be uh, the introduction of SAP AI Core, overview architecture of SAP AI Core, scope of resources, intelligent decision, landscape and intelligent decision landscape for cloud. Let's start off with introduction to SAP AI Core. So basically before we start off with the process flow between the SAP AI Core and SAP AI Launchpad, I'd just like to give you a quick introduction about the SAP AI Core. I have done a different uh, session on uh, SAP AI uh, core uh, introduction uh, as well. So we're going to start off with uh, what exactly is the process flow. But before that, let me give you a basic overview of SAP AI core. SAP AI core is a service in the SAP business technology platform, which is designed to handle, handle the execution and operations of all the AI assets in a standardized, scalable, and hyperscaler agnostic ways. So it provides seamless integration with our SAP solutions, and any uh, AI function can be easily realized using open source frameworks. So SAP AI Core supports full lifecycle management AI core scenarios. Now what we see here on the screen happens to be the process flow between the SAP AI Core and the SAP AI Launchpad. Now, we have got three major paths in the SAP AI Core. Um, we have the SAP AI API, uh, and then we have the SAP AI Launchpad, and then we have the API Connector. So if you look at this, we uh, initially start up with the SAP AI Core uh, uh, at, the, at the beginning and then we have the SAP AI launchpad here and that is getting connected with uh, different personas. So let's discuss these uh, different parts of the SAP AI core. So this AI core is the key to integrating artificial intelligence capabilities in our SAP solutions. And SAP AI core helps us to seamlessly and easily embed uh, AI capabilities into other applications like, like we can see here that we have the GitHub, Docker and data storage. So and leverage high volumes of data from various applications to create robust AI learning models. It executes AI training on accelerated hardware, serve AI interface with low latency and high throughput into a cost efficient manner. It manages all stages of AI lifecycle using a comprehensive set of tools and services. Now, as we discussed, we have SAP AI Core, SAP AI Launchpad, and SAP AI API. So these are the three things that we majorly would focus on. I repeat, the first one happens to be the SAP AI Core. The second happens to be SAP AI Launchpad that we see in the dark blue color. And then we have the AI API. So these are the three major parts uh, here. And uh, so basically the SAP AI Core, as we already discussed, provides an engine that let, lets us to run the AI workflows and model serving workflow, workloads. And then SAP AI Launchpad manages a number of AI runtimes. It allows various user groups to access and manage their AI scenarios. And AI API provides a standard way of managing the AI code uh, and the lifecycle uh, of on uh, different runtimes, regardless of whether they are provided on SAP technology, such as the S4 HANA, or any partner technologies such as AWS, Amazon Web Services. So when the AI API is deployed on the runtime, 
other than the SAP AI core, the runtime has to provide a runtime adapter. So this is there is something called runtime adapter which we are going to discuss in the later point of time. Now, moving on to each one of this. So in the in the in the coming sessions, I'm going to discuss in detail about the machine learning operations. The functions explorer bug spaces that we have in the SAP AI Launchpad, and and also the infrastructure that we have in the SAP API connector. So we have SAP AI Core in which we have the AI API uh, main tenant. Then we have these resource groups and all. And then we have the data stage. Here we have the GitHub and Docker and all. So these are the things that we have in the SAP AI Core. Now let's move on to SAP AI. Architecture. So this is an SAP AI architecture, wherein we have. We can see here clearly that we have. Uh, to start off with, we basically have the data storage here, and uh, then we have this core systems. So if we, I have taken forward the same concept that we have done in the previous slide, where I was discussing with the SAP AI code. In the SAP AI code, if you see, there is AI API, and here also we have the AI API connector. So the AI API is is getting connected with the SAP AI core connector, and then it in turn connects with the operation manager. Here we have this Docker registry and data storage that gets connected with this SAP AI core complete AI core, where we have the workflows and the workflow templates. Then we have the SAP AI API. So users basically interact with the various repositories and objects when the working when working with the SAP AI code. So some of these objects are provided by SAP. In other cases, customers provide these components to enable enhanced control authorizations and continuous integration and continuous deployment as well. So if you see the Git repository, let's understand about the Git repository here. The Git repository is used for storing, training and serving workflows and templates. And uh, then we have something called uh, the hyperscaler object storage which we have here. Uh, it's basically used for storage of input and output artifacts such as training data and models. So for example, we have the SAP BDB object store service right? so that we can get it that from there. And then we have the docker registry we have the docker registry here and the docker registry basically uh, uh, collects the images referenced in the templates and then we have uh, we'll also have something called here docker repo uh, docker repository inside this and the docker repository is basically used for uh, Docker images in, in, inside the registry that we have here. We can also have this Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes basically is used to uh, collect cluster or clusters of and scales of the uh, data which are used in the AI pipelines. And now coming to the AI API. So whatever we see here as AI API. Uh, basically, it's used for managing our artifacts and workflows uh, such as the training scripts, data models and model servers across multiple runtimes. Then we have uh, something called this SAP AI Launchpad, the entire SAP AI Launchpad. So SAP AI Launchpad basically is used as a multi-tenant software as a serv as a, and uh, this is a software as a service. So SAP Launchpad is available as a SAS, Software as a Service, application in SAP Business Transaction Platform, the BTP platform, BTP. And customers and uh, partners can use SAP AI Launchpad to manage AI uh, use cases across multi-instances, multiple instances of AI runtime, such as SAP AI Core.
Now, if you see at the scope of this uh, resources that we have here, the scope of resources is pretty much vast, but we are going to simplify that and understand here. Um, I'm going to discuss a few major things that we have here in the in the scope of the resources. We basically divide them as tenant level resources, uh, resource group level resources, and then we have uh, something called the you know uh, different types of resources that we have it for uh, you know tenant based. We have again uh, I've classified it into SAP I code tenant A. And SAP, SAP I code and B. So both have same kind of things. So whatever you see in pink color and whatever you see in the blue color are two different, uh, uh, two, two different, uh, same two different uh, uh, tenants here. And the first tenant which we are talking about is tenant A, in which we have the workflow and serving templates configuration. Then we have the Docker images, which are a part of Docker Docker repository, which we have discussed. And then we have the identify identity, identity provider. And then in this we have the default resource groups. There are some default resource groups. They are the execution, uh, execution uh, uh, department, de de uh, development keys, and then we have the object store. So if we look at intelligent decision dimensions. We have got a lot of things to be done through various options in AI, SAP AI. Uh, and uh, here we can see on the right side the SAP uh, different softwares that are provided by SAP. And now this can be integrated with all these things like we can communicate through all the social networking sites or we can have chats can be managed with hybrid chats, various tools that can be used for chatting. And then we have this open AI and we can connect it to uh, open ai we can connect to the sap then we have the identify and then we have cloud server hyperscalers and integration with their various tools whether various software these all things are possible here in the intelligent decision dimension so we are talking we are more focused on this ai ai part here in these sessions and i'm going to cover up all these things in detail in the coming sessions Basically, here we have the intelligent decision dimension in the cloud landscape. So, what we have here is we can we can see this SAP Beta Blue here. Uh, this is uh, an SAP FES here, which has the live pool add-on, and we can we can get this live data from the external systems, and then we can process it and take the decisions in the during the lab, during the runtime itself. So, we have this BDP platform where we can have we can see the conversational AI empowered by content. Then we have the web webhook base URL. Here we have the hyperscaler cloud, which is actually as part of the all the cloud platforms, most popular cloud platforms which we already have in the market, like Google GCP, the Google Cloud Platform, which we all know, AWS, Amazon Web Services, and uh, Microsoft Azure. And this, we have this Andex Cloud, and we have a lot of other clouds as well, from which we can get connected to this uh, Sky Buffer. Uh, with using this IDD connector and then from here we can validate the data here and we can also produce this data to a various hybrid chats um, so we can access it from here and then we have the BTP platform as well as the base here from which we can actually get the data and we can also uh, process the data there are a lot of things where we can get the input so this is an end user who is actually trying to connect to the system then we have the clients data connect data center we have it on the right So these are the examples of resource group mapping. So if we if we if we look in, in detail into the resource group mapping, we have this uh, service provided tenant. Each service pro provided tenant will have again default. Then we have the serv service consumer one, service consumer two, and all. And in this way, we have all these options. So this was a very short introduction. As I was also discussing that we already have discussed about the SAP AI core. And this happens to be the second video. Uh, just in case if you have uh, missed that one, I'll, I'll just upload it again here in this uh, channel and also make sure that I sh share the link in the chat box. And do write to uh, me on the, in the comments or uh, you can mail us uh, what exactly is your feedback. And uh, okay, you know if you have any suggestions, you are most welcome to give to us. And in the next session, I'm, we are going to come up with initial setup.
how do we set up the SAP AI core in the BTP platform and um, then we have the managing your Git repository, development, operations and security. And to know all the interesting facts and uh, you know important news and uh, our uploads, uh, please do subscribe to our channel and uh, you know and click on the bell icon so that we can you can get the notifications for all the videos that we upload and do share it with your colleagues as well. Have a great day.